Recently, Ariton Exploration and Production reported another oil spill, raising concerns on the impact of oil theft and pipeline vandalism on Nigeria's oil and gas industry. With CNBC Africa's Kenneth Igboma spoke to Oyeyemi Oke, partner at AOT Law, about how the country can navigate this challenge and more. Take a look. I think uh, the issue about the vandalism, oil losses and oil theft, um, we've continued to see that uh, over the years, perhaps in the last two, three years, we've had certain oil producers who have been badly hit because of uh, vandalism and oil theft. And um, I think uh, looking at this issue, there are two perspectives to it. One will be, uh, which is one of the major concerns for me, is the impact to the environment or on the environment uh, when you have vandalism. Uh, there is a likelihood that spillage would occur, right, and it would affect uh, uh, inhabitants uh, living in those areas, both uh, organisms and also human life. Um, and the other part of it would also be the impact of um, such uh, losses on the companies operating in that area. What would happen is that uh, you would have reduction in revenues, one, for those companies. You would also have re reduction in revenues uh, for government as a whole by way of royalties and also ultimately uh, taxes. Um, so the issue of oil vandal, I mean, uh, pipeline vandalism or uh, sabotage and theft is a great um, uh, source of concern, um, particularly to industry watchers with respect to how this would affect the environment as a whole and uh, perhaps earnings of comment. Yeah, because when you look at these issues, uh, they don't usually operate in the silos because they have a, a, a rippling effect across board in terms of how they're attracting, how Nigeria is seen as an investment destination, especially in the oil and gas space. And right now we're looking at Europe, looking at uh, countries, big countries, countries in Europe, looking to partner with African countries, especially in the area of gas. And what does this say to that, um, to, 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 uh, to the perception of investors looking at Nigeria? One of the things we should uh, bear in mind is that uh, we are in the energy transition phase um, for now. We've seen uh, perhaps um, uh, what I would call sophisticated investors actually divesting from the Nigerian market, uh, either directly or indirectly, uh, with respect to uh, what, what is called dirty fuel, which will uh, essentially mean oil. And uh, we see more uh, divestments. Uh, I mean, I mean, there, there, there are institutions that we would have more divestment. And uh, now those uh, sophisticated, sophisticated investors that are moving towards cleaner sources of fuel, perhaps, uh, as they say, gas is the transition fuel. Maybe we will still have some type of investment in gas in terms of significance of investment. But um, when you say Nigeria is an uh, investment de uh, destination, perhaps it may be with respect to uh, looking at uh, maybe gas as a transition fuel, but with respect to uh, crude oil, uh, I don't think there's a lot of appetite. Uh, by the international investors uh, with respect to crude oil. And that's why we're seeing a lot of local participation. Uh, we're seeing uh, uh, an issue where, I mean, we're seeing some trend whereby there is a, a bit of concentration towards uh, cleaner fuels, maybe renewables, uh, and that may go on for, for some time. So uh, looking at this, perhaps uh, if we are looking at things around uh, oil theft, sabotage, and things like that, it would affect us more in terms of uh, we have in terms of uh, the local investment space. There are a lot of local investors in that space, mm. and um, that is something that needs to be considered. Right, because when you look at what's played out, especially talking about the price of fuel in the country, we're seeing that the dynamics around that causing a lot of um, um, ripple recently. We're seeing fuel, uh, fuel queues reoccurring, uh, and more or less still talking about structural issues within the industry that need to be sorted out. Um, for, as an industry watcher, uh, what do you make of these events that we're seeing, especially around uh, the fuel prices? Okay, uh, the trigger for uh, the increase in fuel prices is uh, what I would say simple. It's just simple economics. Um, if you have the cost of raw material go up, definitely the price of finished products will also go up. But when uh, in a phase whereby uh, oil, as at, at least as at, I think, yesterday, uh, Brent, London Brent is about $100, and um, um, WTI is also about uh, $96, $97. Uh, this means that the prices are going up, which is the raw material for producing refined products, which uh, you and I consume maybe through our cars or unfortunately through our generators. Um, so if we continue to see the increase, uh, the, I mean, the, the prices continue to push up enough, definitely the ripple effect is that uh, you and I 
we would see an increase in the cost of um, of landing for refined uh, products. But the question would now be, in the local market, how is that handled? Uh, there is the issue of uh, of subsidy. Uh, or let let me look at it from two perspectives. One, uh, on the income side, we are going to gain a lot of money as a nation as a result of the uh, increase in prices of uh, crude oil. But on the on the other side, is uh, the cost of refined products, which you and I have to uh, pay for, which would definitely be on the increase. Now, how does that uh, tie into what is happening now? Um, Ipman, which are the independent uh, marketers, are saying that uh, the landing costs has uh, gone up and uh, there is still some type of uh, regulation in terms of uh, uh, refined products, especially as it relates to, let's say, uh, PMS, uh, not necessarily uh, AGO, which is uh, relatively deregulated. But for PMS, what we're seeing is that there is an increase in cost of landing cost and government still tries to uh, put a lead on prices. And what would happen with that is that uh, government uh, uh, expenditure with regards to the subsidy will continue to, to go up. And the question be, are these payments even made to these marketers? And, and uh, perhaps maybe that's why we have uh, the scenario which we are faced with regards to uh, first scarcity one and also uh, continuous increase in prices of uh, of uh, refined products. I think for me, um, w- the problem I have with the Nigerian market is that when prices go up uh, as a result of fluctuation in the cost of uh, raw material, which is crude oil, um, it should also be reflective in the event that uh, there is a dip in price. Anytime there's a dip in price, the market should also feel it by a reduction in uh, crude oil, I mean in refined products. Uh, in terms of the pricing. But one thing we found out in the Nigerian market, which is a bit weird, is that uh, when there is an increase in price, uh, it, it rarely comes down. And that is some type of uh, economics that, uh, for me, I still do not understand. All right, more or less the, the local market define all economic uh, principles there. But I would like you to speak on what you, the, the impact you think the Dang- Dangote refining, if it comes on board at the end of Q3, as a last communication from the organization, the, it was the, that was the deadline they gave to, for production to start at least. Uh, but if that finally, re, that the refined products from the Dangote refining hits the market, how would that affect dynamics playing about here in Nigeria? Okay, um, so the the refinery definitely will contribute in terms of uh, perhaps a local uh, production of uh, refined products into the Nigerian market. Perhaps uh, impact of international shock, perhaps uh, things around uh, import prices, I mean cost of freight uh, uh, may, and perhaps maybe duties may not impact on the price of uh, locally produced uh, uh, refined products. So that may relatively maybe reduce pricing a bit and also help in terms of supply into the market. However, um, the, the, the Dangote refinery is also not going to be immune to the shocks of uh, international pricing. Uh, definitely, if I'm so supplying um, um, maybe the refinery or if I have uh, an obligation or I want to enter into a contract to supply the refinery at perhaps uh, $100, uh, per barrel, definitely uh, that would also be the same in the international market. So if I'm a local producer, I may, I may, I mean, if you if you if uh, the refinery actually is of taken from a ro- local producer, I may not necessarily be immune to the shock in the international uh, market. I think the the good thing is one, we may readily have uh, a bit more supply locally. One and uh, and the second part is that. Uh, that supply may not necessarily be subject to certain uh, logistics, transportation, uh, and freight costs. 